You just start wearing street clothes on Saturday. <laughs> I like the way you put that. <laughs> Boy, it sure does appear that way, doesn't it? Gosh, to have that guy in the middle game of a series, unbelievable. So for anybody out there that doesn't like the transfer portal, you need to come and watch Derek Clark pitch for the Mountaineers. If it wasn't for the transfer portal, Derek Clark wouldn't be here. And if it wasn't for the support we get in the transfer portal, Derek Clark wouldn't be here. Kyle West wouldn't be here. Reed Tumley wouldn't be here. And those guys all are great players here. So obviously Derek's proven he could go this far, but what goes into giving him that chance the first time? You know, what makes you say, okay, that's a great seven innings. I'm going to let him go out for the eighth and ninth. Well, you know, he could have – he could have done that more often, but he missed the first four weeks with an injury, so he was his pitch count was behind everybody else. Uh, so that guy could have five or six complete games by now if he would have started the season with us. But he just gets what he does what good starting pitchers do. They get better the longer they're out there. So anytime we face a good starting pitcher that throws a lot of strikes, the time to get him is early before they settle in. And his first three innings, he wasn't settled in yet. His last three, seventh, eighth, and ninth, were way better than the first, second, and third. And that's, it's hard to, hard to measure what that guy's got inside his chest. He's just a tremendous leader, tremendous competitor, and a tremendous pitcher. Coach, you obviously kind of handled Traxel the same way last year, letting him pitch deep. But he's a completely different kind of pitcher than Traxel was. What are the differences there, and why can you still treat him the same way you did Traxel? Well, because he's performing the same way. But Derek is a guy who's going to continue to get better every single time out. He'll go back and watch this game on video and see what he did right, see what he did wrong. He'll be scouting his next opponent. Uh, he just does literally everything you want one of your baseball players to do. Derek Clark does it. What is it that allows him to move forward past those two runs he gave up in the third inning? You know, one I think first one came on a wild pitch. The other one was maybe a play that could have been made, but he you know it doesn't seem like he lingers on it. No, he doesn't linger on it. He knows he knows the deal. He knows when he pitches on Saturday, his job is to throw the whole game, and. Doesn't matter what happens early on. He can give up three runs, four runs. He knows why he's out there, and uh, so if, if something goes wrong, he doesn't care. He just that makes him better. When when somebody gets a hit, uh, the kid that hit the homer, that made Derek better. And a lot of guys would fold over and get worse after that happens. That makes him better. Coach, so switching gears a little bit. I mean, hey. Oh my goodness! <laughs> look who's in the house. Aaron Pitt himself. How are you doing, brother? Good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, I, I know aggressive base running has kind of been a hallmark of your programs for a long time, but the way you guys ran the bases today, I mean, it seemed like every chance you took worked. It just it seemed like – has it been this way for you this year? It hasn't. You know the players in our lineup, and this is – we don't have even half the speed we've had last year, but we're going to take what they give us, you know, because that's – it's amazing, though, even though we don't have the speed, when we – run and when we bunt and when we play that game, we usually win. So we're st always going to continue to take what people give us. Uh, but we don't have the Victor Scotts and the Brandon Whites and those guys that are going to steal, you know, 35, 40 bases. And JJ is not 100 percent, so he's not going to steal many bases. Uh, so the guys who are stealing bases aren't base stealers. And I think that has a lot to do with why they're stealing bases, because the other team knows they're not great runners and they don't make too much of an attempt to hold us. Uh, any thoughts? Well, what are, what are your thoughts? You know, JJ hitting the home run today, kind of seeing the ball a little bit better. I mean, just getting back into it. Yeah, Homer's my favorite play. <laughs> when there's three guys on base, that makes it even better. And, you know, when, when players miss time, you always come back rusty. Baseball's a sport where you have to do it almost every day to stay good at it. Nobody's ever been perfect at baseball, but if a pitcher misses a start, he's always rusty coming back. If a, a position player misses a start, they're always rusty coming back. And today, when he was hitting the ball to left center field, and let, that's JJ. Uh, when he hits uh, ground balls on the pull side, that's not JJ. Uh, so uh, the homer, the sack fly, the double at Kansas in the ninth inning, those are all balls that are hit really hard to the opposite field. 
and when he's doing that, you know he's getting back to where he was. The team has started to hit the ball better since Weatherhall and Sabe have come back. What can you say that your team just plays better with them and they've just started to come alive? There's no doubt. We, we The Kansas series last weekend, he was the first batter of the series because he hits leadoff and we were the visitors. He got a base hit up the middle, and I think the whole dugout went, yes, yes, we got our team. And that's that's an amazing feeling to feel the energy going through the dugout with him and Logan back. I mean, JJ's missed, I don't know how many games, 20 some. Logan's missed 20 games. Hussey's missed 10 games. Cresser's missed 10 games. This has been the most injured team I have ever coached. And for us to be standing here, uh, not talking about the elephant in the room that we're in first place right now, uh, is amazing to do what we've done without those guys. Uh, we still have some pitching pieces that we have to move around and, and see how that's gonna play out. But uh, having those guys back changes the complexion of our team. So I'm just gonna ask you about that. When you look up, I don't know if you call it makeup or the character, but I mean, from the beginning till now, you've had the injuries, but you've also had some, probably some non-conference games you probably would like to have back. You know, you get no hit one one game, and then you come back and win that series. Uh, you know, you lose to Marshall the other day, and then you come back and beat the number 17. What is it that, you know, every time you think, okay, well, this is it, they, you know, they show you're wrong. I, mean, I think my coaches, do a great job. We're always convincing these guys that over the course of 60 games, you're going to lose a game that you shouldn't have lost. We lost a really bad game at Charlotte. We lost a fly ball in the sun. We lost that game at Marshall. That's two games out of 60. We'll get that back. We're going to win a couple games that we're not supposed to. Over the course of 60 games, all that stuff kind of plays out. Uh, so you can't get too caught up in it when that happens, and you can't get too excited about it when it happens on the good side. So this team has been so even keeled, and uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but in two years ago, we were one of only three or four teams in the nation that didn't lose three games in a row the entire season. And then last year, we did the same exact thing. We went to Texas and got swept at Texas in the last regular season game, a series of the year. And everybody said, what happened? What happened? You got swept. I'll tell you what happened. We did what everybody else in the country. We were the only team at that point who had been in that position. We have been playing really good, consistent baseball in this program for a long time. And I think uh, we have done a good job of convincing them that uh, you have to have a short memory, don't worry about the games that you, you feel like you gave away. Just always be ready to play the next one. And I think that's what we've done. You're talking about kids, though. Is that a hard message to get across to them? Yeah, for sure. Because it, social media, and they, they read everything, and they see everything. And they see when people say great things about them, and they see when they don't. So, yeah, we got a uh, – Coach Saves likes to call it poison. You know, don't, don't read the poison because if you get caught up in it, you can start believing it, yeah. you know, but uh, our guys believe what we talk to them about in the locker room and in the team theater and within our family. So regardless of what it says from the outside, our guys really, really know uh, how to approach every game.